Hi everyone, welcome to the presentation of our paper, Older Adults Using Technology for Meaningful Activities During COVID-19, an analysis through the lens of self-determination theory. My name is Wei Zhao, and I'm from the School of Computing and Information Systems at the University of Melbourne. This paper was co-authored with Ryan M. Kelly, Melissa J. Rogerson, and Jenny Wakeholt. Engaging in meaningful activities is essential for the well-being of people in later life. Meaningful activities are those that can bring value to people and help them achieve their goals or gain a sense of purpose, such as pursuing hobbies, volunteering, civic participation, and lifelong learning. However, as people age, they may have fewer opportunities to engage in these meaningful activities due to the decline in their health and mobility. Since 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic and restriction rules from it make it harder for older people to engage in meaningful activities. Therefore, many older people started to adopt digital technologies to find alternative options. This has presented new challenges for their everyday use of technology, such as access to technologies, access to technical support, and the issue of digital exclusion. In this study, we aim to explore how older adults use technology to engage in meaningful activities during the COVID-19 pandemic. We further aim to identify the opportunities and challenges involved in using technology for meaningful activities to inform future design practices. To achieve this goal, we conducted semi-structured interviews with 40 older adults who were aged over 65 and living independently to understand their experiences of using technology in their homes during COVID-19 lockdowns. We conducted a thematic analysis of the interview data and interpreted the data through the lens of self-determination theory. According to self-determination theory by Desi and Ryan, people have three basic psychological needs. Autonomy, the need for self-regulating one's experiences and actions. Competence, the need for feeling effective in one's actions and relatedness, which means staying socially connected with others. Previous research suggests that engaging in meaningful activities offers a means through which people can satisfy these three basic psychological needs and contribute to well-being. Our findings show that using technology to engage in meaningful activities can both support and undermine older people's sense of autonomy, competence, and relatedness. For autonomy, Technologies provided opportunities for older people to access a wide range of activity options to choose from and relate to. Examples from our findings include listening to podcasts, taking virtual tours, visiting virtual exhibitions, attending online courses, doing exercise, playing games, and broadcasting. The need for autonomy is supported through provisions of choice and the encouragement of self-regulation of daily activities. This is especially useful for older people who are not able to participate in in-person activities due to illness, mobility constraints, or geographic isolation. On the other hand, older adults can be exposed to excessive, irrelevant, and unwanted information when using the internet. The overwhelming stream of information and the constant online interaction with other people can also lead to the issue of information overload. These issues can lead to a restricted sense of autonomy due to an ongoing need to filter information and avoid unwanted content. We also found concerns of privacy and security when they use technologies. For example, one participant said, they kind of follow you. I noticed that if you search for something, usually maybe a product, they track you down and they try to advertise. That's something I'm really against. These concerns can limit older people's willingness and ability to explore and utilize the full range of functions that technologies provide, undermining their autonomy needs. For competence, we found that digital technologies can provide opportunities for older people to discover and learn new things, apply skills and effort to different tasks, and gain a sense of achievement. Participants use online platforms such as YouTube and Facebook to learn new hobbies such as crafts, languages, and recipes. Some participants use mobile apps when pursuing hobbies in hiking and gardening. In these cases, the need for competence was supported through the exercise, expansion, and expression of one's talents and capabilities. We also had an interviewee who built a home recording studio during the lockdown. 
He used old towels and pillows to build a sound buffer, and combined an ironing board with a child's chair and stack of books to hold a teleprompter, as shown in the picture. This example shows his creativity in adapting the environment of using technologies to the changing context of the pandemic. However, we also found some barriers to competence. We found that some constraints were caused by the design of the technology, such as frequent system updates and the lack of consistency between versions. Just like one interviewee said, "When I shut down, they've upgraded, and they open up the computer, and suddenly it's different. Everything changes so much. The feelings of confusion and frustration can sometimes turn into fear." Some participants felt afraid to use technology when things become complicated, and others had a fear of damaging or breaking technology. These constraints could affect older adults' confidence in using technologies, limiting their sense of competence. For relatedness, we found that communication technologies provided older people with new opportunities to engage in meaningful connections. Such as through social media or video chatting with family and friends, some people also engage in shared recreational experiences, such as playing the same word puzzle game with others. Our participants also use technologies for creating and sharing digital content. For example, one interviewee described the experiences of creating cooking videos and sharing them with extended family members and friends through YouTube. Some individuals engaged in remote volunteering by serving as digital coaches and assisting others in using technology. The need for relatedness was supported not only through social interaction but also by benefiting other people's lives. On the other hand, some participants complained about the lack of physical interaction with others and reduced verbal communication skills if they relied too much on communication through technology. They also express the needs for deeper and more effortful communication. Based on these findings, we propose some implications for future design of technology-mediated activities for older people. Empower older adults in the use and production of digital content, which can help challenge stereotypes about the image of older people and promote a sense of competence. Support older adults' engagement in personal interests and passions. Future work should explore how interest-led technologies can be designed and used in different settings to support meaningful engagement. Include positive feedback to support technology self-exploration. Digital interfaces should avoid negative messages and use a more affirmative tone to reduce older people's fears and support their exploration of the digital world. Provide opportunities for meaningful and effortful communications. If you would like to know more about our paper, please refer to our full paper or contact us by email. Thank you.